Lawyer and Vice Chair of Class, Jeff Shares. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Aram. Thank you very much. Thank you. How do you understand the importance of the HDP in Turkey? When I think of Turkey and I think of democracy, I go back a long way to 1974. I can remember when the Turkish invasion of northern Cyprus to protect Turkish Cypriots from the coup in Cyprus by Nikos Sampson was overcome by the Turkish invasion, of course, and this in turn indirectly led to the fall of the Greek military hunter the fascist hunter. And as a young student, I was very impressed with this chain of events. Then some years ago, but many years on, the Istanbul Convention on the Prevention of Violence Against Women seemed to me and many others as a wonderful step, as a wonderful uh, movement uh, for change. And then I learned very recently that Turkey has yet again reneged on its democratic commitments and withdrawn from the convention. It seems to me, therefore, that in Turkey, the HDP, we call them the People's Democratic Party, stands for hope. It is hope incarnate because it unites so many disparate people. It is progressive. It is firm in its resistance to the attacks on democracy, and it is against an authoritarian regime. It brings together women and young people across the communities and socialists, and its democratic success already has alarmed the president. This is why the HDP has been accorded the accolade of a neo-fascist state which is to call its opponents terrorists in order to legitimize the authoritarian oppression that will ensue and has ensued. The HDP stands for hope in Turkey. It is the only hope for a secure and a democratic country. How do you interpret the state of democracy and the rule of law in Turkey given the repression and attacks the HDP are experiencing? I'm afraid that this is a long story, but I will do my best to abbreviate it. I have heard as a lawyer that prosecution uh, immunity has been withdrawn from the MPs in the Turkish parliament following the election. And on any view, this seems to me to be wholly unconstitutional. As I understand it, thousands of HDP party members are now in prison. And the chief public prosecutor gives the impression that he wishes to ban the, H, the, the HDP. This government, this Turkish government, has even ignored the decision of the European Court of Human Rights to release the former leader of the HDP, Selahattin Demirtas. It is an astonishing situation. And meanwhile, activists and journalists continue to be imprisoned. What an authoritarian regime does to cling to power at all costs is what the Turkish regime has been doing to the HDP. What do you think the failure of the international community, including the UK government, to take concentrate action against Turkey's repression of the HDP indicates about these governments? May, may I start with a quote from a, uh, a British novelist, writer, in the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century, Chesterton, 
Chesterton uh, defined an ambassador as a man uh, of honor, but sent to lie for his country. Well, the neoliberal equivalent of this is far, far worse. It seems to me that neoliberalism has delivered what it promised. The rich are richer, inequality has increased, paid for by low wages, poor conditions, and cutthroat competition. While the powerful thrive, division lies and force on their side, and where possible, uh, with a compliant opposition who will be duly praised for their compliance. In the UK, there is an attack on asylum seekers. The right wing government has introduced a police bill to curtail demonstrations. The so called spy cops bill legitimizes criminal actions by state agents and their informers. The climate of fear is intended to frighten people who migrated to the UK over 60 years ago, as well as migrant workers today. Human rights and the quality of democracy matter to neoliberal capitalism only when its economic or electoral interests are at stake. Look at the betrayal of the Kurdish forces in Syria at the hands of Erdogan, but acquiesced in by Trump. The US sees Erdogan somehow as a source of stability in the region. And I am afraid that Europe sees Erdogan as a barrier to migration. Neoliberalism can descend so easily into neo-fascism. And I'm afraid at the present time, all trade unions, all workers in these countries must fight to defend democracy. And this is proving to be particularly difficult under the pandemic. What do you think international organizations and in particular the trade union movement can do uh, to support the HDP and pressure their own governments to take action? I'm glad you asked. I've been a supporter of and part of the trade union movement all my life. And with the trade unions in Britain, I have campaigned in Latin America, in South Africa, and in uh, Palestine. Um, the conditions in Turkey necessitate an international campaign. And you know that much is done in London to uh, engage with the parliamentarians, with the academics, and also um, with the trade unions. And uh, these are the initiatives that will lead to the solidarity that is necessary that the unions will be prepared to offer. Even though the unions are weaker these days in this country, they are still standing up for democracy, uh, feminism, equality, and trade union rights, all of which they associate with the HDP. And through this means, the unions, through the global unions, through the TUC, through solidarity internationally, can assist to publicize and to stand together with the struggle of the HDP. I believe that our hearts are clearly with the HDP in their struggle at the present time, and I am sure that solidarity will be delivered uh, from the British trade union movement to the HDP at this most difficult time. Dear uh, Jeff Shares, the lawyer and vice chair of class, thanks for joining us. Thank you for your comments today. Thank you so much. Much obliged. It was my pleasure. Thank you.